right, talking today about increasing productivity without being that caricature of like the evil boss. Um, I've got a few ideas or um, some outside of the box ideas for you around increasing the productivity of your team that I wanna share with you and hope some of these will be useful. So number one, metrics and meaning. Here's the deal, if you're not measuring something, it ain't gonna improve. If you're not measuring something and sharing the measurements, sharing the metrics, sharing how you're tracking against target, it's not gonna improve. If you're not measuring something, sharing the measures, sharing the metrics, and providing meaning and context, it's unlikely to improve. So what do I mean by that? When you stand in front of your team members and say, oh, we're, um, we are 50% lower year over year sales. What does that mean for me? Is there something I'm supposed to be doing different? Is there something I can take on that will help with that? Give the measurement, give the meaning of it, why it matters and what people can do to improve, okay? Or, or support or help or whatever that looks like. Metrics and meaning. Number two on the list, systemic issues and bottlenecks. Before you start saying to people, work harder, what you wanna look at is, What's going on in the way we work, no one's fault. Like if you replace the whole team tomorrow, you still have these issues. What is going on in the way we work that's causing bottlenecks, slowdowns, frustration issues? Um, this is one where your team members are gonna know more than you will about what's working, what's not. Have some focus groups, even just next team meeting, say, hey, what's the frustrations out there? And, and listen to them. Right, because sometimes it's easy when we're not in the day-to-day -to, -day to brush off things when they say things like, oh, those like PO forms are so annoying. There is probably some message in there for you to improve. Even though you think like PO form, it took a minute, who cares? They care. There's probably an improvement to be made there, okay? So that's number two. Number three, grown-up conversations, my favorite topic. Sometimes it's gonna be the way you work that's causing the issues and the slowdowns. Sometimes it's the person. Okay, that is where you go and have a grown up conversation with a single person. That's not the time to just like call a team meeting and say like, hey, I've noticed some people in the team are on Facebook too much. We really need to cut that down. No, if you have that temptation and it is tempting because it's easier, you gotta cut that out, right? If there's someone who's not meeting their targets and you've, you know, you go and have a conversation with that person, it's uncomfortable but it's the right thing to do. And you're gonna find way more impact from that than just having these random team meetings where the people who aren't doing that thing that's annoying you or bugging you or causing slowdowns are then actually demotivated. Cause they're like, well, I don't do any of that shit. And I've just been told off for something I don't even do. If you have an issue with one or two or even three people's performance, talk to those people, right? one-on-one -on -one conversations. That's number three. Number four, continuous improvement programs. So this is one very similar to systemic issues, but it's just like a proactive ongoing one. It's a place where team members, if they notice something that they think could be improved or even just suggestions for new exciting ideas to look into, you have a, like a, a way to capture those ideas and to create some of them and, and work on some of them and turn, you know, execute on some of them. Um, it can be as simple as just like a comment box, a drop box. It could be a monthly team discussion. It could, you know, whatever makes sense for your group, capture those ideas, capture them proactively rather than when you've noticed issues, which is what the um, systemic issues point was about. Continuous improvement. Number five on the list, retrospectives. So very similar to this idea of systemic issues, continuous improvement, it's sort of a term I borrow from agile software development. Have a regular meeting, discussion, people in front of each other, where you capture what went well and what did not. What do we wanna make sure we do again because it worked? What didn't go well that we wanna talk about and find fixes for? Here's, here's the trick though with a retrospective. You as the manager has to have to be just another person in the meeting, right? It's not up to you to come up with the solutions. It's not up to you to, um, you know, have all the conversation to come up with all the ideas. You're just a member of the team. This is a retrospective is about the team coming up with, yeah, this actually didn't work that well. I didn't really like this. I thought this moved too slow. They're identifying the problems and they're potentially coming up with the solutions as well. Regular drumbeat 
way of addressing and capturing some of those ideas. Um, number six, career conversations. So I've talked about this before uh, in a few other videos and blogs. This is the idea that you make the assumption that that person will probably leave your team at some point because that's reality. <laughs> like They will. I mean, no one, it's pretty much unheard of for someone to spend their whole career in one team or one company, especially nowadays. Right? So the idea here is you have, you just be open about it. You have, um, very honest conversations about where they see their career going, how you can support them in the now with working towards that goal, even though that goal probably will not be with your team or with your company. Now, why this ties back to productivity is because they are going to be that much more engaged, feel that much more valued and give that much more sort of discretionary effort, knowing that they're valued by you, respected by you. And, and, um, and it's not like this weird secret thing that they just have to pretend they're exactly where they want to be. Um, it's just, it's a sort of a psychological trust one that I, I really recommend building into how you increase productivity. Even though it seems a little on a tangent. Um, and the last one, of course, as I talk about all the time is modeling the behavior. If you have an expectation of your team member around, um, how they behave, how they work, the speed quality of work, you better be prepared to meet or exceed that expectation as well. Right? Um, the minute you enter into hypocritical uh, land of, uh, you know, it's 501 and you're like, well, I'm heading home, but, um, everyone really needs to stay late and finish this project. Mm -mm -mm. It's not going to go well for you is not going to go well for you. You have to be able to model the behavior that you expect to see from your team members. Hold yourself to an even higher standard than you hold them. I know that seems unfair, but guess what? That's why they pay the big, big bucks and it's why management really isn't easy. It's definitely not an easy gig. Um, it's hard. So those are seven ideas, um, around increasing productivity that might be a little different than what you've heard before. Hopefully that gives you some food for thought. Um, throw something in the comments. Let me know what you're going to try differently. Um, head over to lightupwork.com. Free resources over there for you to help with all this leadership and management mumbo jumbo. Um, leading a team is hard, so go easy on yourself. And good luck with it all. Let me know how it goes.